All right, we are live now. All right, I'm going to go to watch list. I put it put in a few things off the lightning round, and there's really just six tickers he mentioned in his most recent light, lightning round. Um, I guess he didn't have one earlier in the week because he took Monday off, but we'll work with it. And then we're going to go into a couple from the past we can, we can dig into as well. So um, I'll start off. He was talking about Disney. Of course, they're... You know, that's one of the favorite stocks with uh, old Kramer there. I've been watching this measured move set up here, and it's pretty much nailed just above the half mark and rejected here. I think we might be pulling back here, and if we break support at 106.95, we could see this run down to support or somewhere in the middle of that gap from earnings and maybe give us retracement around 103.80. Um, would I short Disney here? Not necessarily. I think I would wait out and see what happens here first. We have pretty much every reason to look back at the previous trend and realize it has gapped up. It has gone parabolic, but that doesn't mean it can't be irrational and go higher. Uh, certainly, you know, take that with a, with a bit of consideration as to current price action. And you can see this is looking like we're threatening to break that support level and maybe reach back into that. Uh, previous support level as well. So certainly um, not a position I would take just yet, but I might consider waiting for that bounce and maybe even going long unless it breaks support and starts to eat this gap, and then I can short it. So I'm going to be in the air on Disney. I'm going to say I'm going to stay away and wait. Um, of course, you know, the Kramer Club owns it. Uh, he didn't say anything positive or negative about it. So, I mean, you can look at the chart and see it's neither it's just trading in a range eventually this range will break and give us a swing until then and eh, we just wait patiently uh moving on up the list and i'll keep it short today by the way <clears throat> this one he simply said i don't know enough about this or what they do i guess this is privatized uh stuff landing on the moon or something like that i don't know much about it either to be honest but i can look left and man there was some hype waves that pushed that thing up and so far i don't see any evidence of any reverse splits on this thing and it looks like we have earnings expected pretty soon here i don't know enough of the fundamentals on this thing to really dig into it but price action says man we're parabolic we've made a really nice big old parabolic move and we're pretty much in about that uh, area where we'd be interested in maybe taking a swing trade on this thing I haven't done a whole bunch of digging on this to know if it's even optionable at this point, but it might be. Let's see if we can find a couple of bull targets. They're simple ones here. I can just draw this as a basic accumulation area. Let's say we get past this zone here, then we'll start talking. I always look to the left and find the bigger wicks on a two-hour chart, and that's an important one right there. We've got a little double bottom after a big pullback. We breach the high of that double bottom and start getting into this liquidity zone. That's where we could be bulls. We could see this for a long and maybe target a 50% retracement of the previous trend first. Say right about 11.50 or so, and it can certainly trend higher from there. Uh, there's a lot of hype pushing this thing, though. It's already pretty damn parabolic. So if it can't do that, if it rejects in here, maybe we end up with a better short. And a short would say mean reversion of about 7.30. And possibly a reach for that previous low accumulation around 4.50 is possible if it can't get any more uh, bulls in the mix here, so to speak, but you gotta be careful with these kinds of things. Sometimes they'll start, uh, soaking the investors down and, uh, when they see stuff like this and they've been trending along the bottom for a while, so to speak, after market structure has run its course, which it has, uh, sometimes you'll start to see mixed shelf offerings coming out, offering new equity, new shares into the market, and they will run it down doing that by diluting the stock. And then if they break their uh, minimum listing for the market that they're on, uh, they can end up going and doing a reverse split after the fact. So be careful when you see these parabolic moves or short squeezes or whatever the hell causes these things. They can 
uh, cause you some grief if you start uh, FOMOing these things or holding bags too long. So keep your trades short term on this thing for sure. Swing trades, maybe some scalps, some day trading, great stuff there. But uh, be very cautious when you're trading something like this. Uh, let's see here. Next one we're looking at ZS. And give me one second. I got to open up the page on this one. This one's kind of interesting. I got to get back into the uh, page. We'll read what he said about this one because this is interesting. <laughs> it is a good one to buy, is what he said. Hmm. That doesn't tell me very much. <laughs> We can see it's had a hell of a pullback. Um, we've got uh, earnings coming out on the 29th. And man, we had some news that must have moved this to the bear side. So let's start playing with some ranges here. Go to the four hour. Press this down. We've got liquidity right there to the left. You can see there were buyers here. That was a previous demand zone and it's now a supply zone. Well, if we can melt through that, we might even get back into reverting half of this trend just a little bit above and maybe set a bull target. Uh, let's say around 236.50. So maybe we can give him a kudo here. He did mention this uh, just yesterday, so perhaps he uh, gets a little credit for this one. That was a good one to buy. Would I hold it for a long time? Maybe. Um, we can see market structure has done its thing. Um, although not as long of an accumulation on this one, and it has made a mean reversion of this entire trend more or less anyway, this is the time where you're careful. So if you're going to scalp it long, maybe keep that as short-term trade as well. And I would certainly be cautious that uh, earnings are coming out on the 29th here. And it's been low before, so careful you don't get your face ripped off if you're going long. Be careful that you make sure it goes through from one zone to the next. Just kind of take it easy with this type of stuff. This is going to be volatile. That's all I can really say on this one. Uh, the next one, SMCI. Damn, talk about an elephant in the room. A while back, if you've been keeping in touch with uh, what we've been doing weekly on Thursdays with uh, our Jim Cramer versus Price Action series, we've been trading this a while. Those measured moves play, played out really well. But now we're in an area where it's gone parabolic. I mean, it went ballistic. And we've come back to support. We went right to half a move. See that in history. We knew what, what was up when it came to there. Found some supply zone here, or I'm sorry, demand zone here. Right off of that wick there. And we shot right back up past the mean of that whole pullback uh, right in here. So let's go with another zone here. I'll just randomly stretch the length out on it. We don't have time to draw a bunch of pictures. But you can see a nice one for one is done off this rebound on the two hour chart. And we're up into the last bit of our expected range. So this is a trending you share, stock. You share your screen, Jeremy. Sorry. Oh, geez. You know what? I need to share that in the chat too, huh? Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> I have it on YouTube if you want to see it. It's about a couple of second delay. There you go. Sorry about that. Thank you. All right. So SMCI, we can see. Nice little block. There's your primary. There's your secondary. We're just about in that range. So if it's going to break out further, it's got to breach that upper limit of about 940 bucks or so to go any higher. So definitely be cautious if you're already long on this thing. Maybe start looking for an exit um, around half of this big old bar back here. Maybe it'll scream out up to a 960-ish. This thing's quite volatile and does a lot. But look at the bigger picture here. One giant cup and handle looking thing here with a parabolic trend behind it. We know what these do. They're very typical. You get two rim lines typically and I'm going to map them out right here. So if we start getting into the levels up here around a grand or so, yikes, that's parabolic. It's eating this whole bar. Not going to say it won't do it, but it can. 
<laughs> and if we get above this zone here, which is where we're pushing, we could easily see that thing just rip. Expect if it gets this high, it will likely immediately generate the handle part of a cup and handle and start to pull back again, maybe around 926, 927, where it's at now-ish, after it goes parabolic to that point. If it happens today or tomorrow, it does not matter. It's just watch it because that is a rim line. If it breaches the high and starts to run out of this thing, um, good luck. Just map it, trade it, day trade it as it goes, whatever. But if it hits this and rejects, the handle will form in this range typically. So you'll either get the whole rim line, half a rim line, or, well, in this case, three quarters of a rim line. Typical measured, or typical measured moves out of a cup and handle typically have high probability of hitting these targets. So when they do and they pull back, profit taking happens. Look for it to just eat that whole bar. Come right back, test support, and then maybe if things continue to be super bullish on this thing, which they very well can, we can trend out later. And that's where we start to take our measured move outside after a cup and handle. This whole zone becomes your primary, and the breakout move would take it up here, just like it did with Spy. Same maneuver. Seen this a million times. So if things get ballistic, yeah, sure, this could be a great investment stock in the, in the near future, but for now it's volatile and it's going to give you trading opportunities before it gives you trade, uh, investing opportunities. If you miss the boat on this thing and you want to scalp it a little, go ahead. But uh, when they're this high, be very, very careful. Lots of zones it can reject. <clears throat> I might give that a go later on. I'm going to put this on my list because that's exceedingly looking like a possible two for the day. Make a note. Okay. All right. Certainly since uh, Kramer says, uh, you know, <laughs> I would like to be long on this. We don't want to see a Kramer kiss a death in here and then have him top tick this thing, but it's a good chance he might. He's already been in the stock a few times, and I think, um, you know, if he's uh, going to take any pride in it, he'll try to try to chase it higher, and I hope, you know, people don't end up holding bags. Moving on, um, Ford, he says, has stalled. If you've been around bullish bears long enough, you know we trade the living hell out of Ford. It's, it's pretty fun. It's a great platform to understand how to trade options strategies. We've essentially met the mean reversion three times on this thing, and it was resistance twice. Now it's support. That whole trend was pretty much methodical and easy to map. But now we've got a little zone here that we're dealing with on the daily. And if we continue higher here, we can run back up to these targets up in here. We can start seeing, you know, 1350, 13, 30 to 1350 up in that area. If it goes parabolic, 1450, yeah, who, who knows? But the fact that he says it stalled here, it <laughs> tells me he might have, uh, might have overstepped his, uh, intuition there just a bit this is basically the limit line we know where the liquidity is we know where the target zone is from here it is just a mean reversion of the previous two hour trend you can see it right here there's your high there's half there's the other half down we bounced so if it can sustain support here and continue to run through this angular we could see it hit the previous high and there's plenty of targets in between so Trading options on this bad boy can be very lucrative. And if you are looking to wheel trade this thing, I find that it doesn't give the best return on risk unless you're running a synthetic long on it. But that's that's a whole lot of stuff to speak about. So <laughs> getting into this thing, though, um, would I buy it here if I didn't already own it? Maybe if I was going to generate some income on the options. But I know that this this whole move here was a bit... Tremendous. And let me see. I bet that's an earnings. Yep. That was an earnings play. So typically when you see things go parabolic in an earnings play, they end up retracing. But this is our support area. If we're going to bounce and go higher here, it will hold here. If it breaks this zone, we can start looking short. And that's where this mean reversion comes in. Split the trend in half. Draw a line. That's your target. There's a gap. 
pretty simple. Can you trade that both ways? Sure. You can run, um, you know, leap condors and flip in and out of the short legs and make some money on this thing while it does its thing in range. Can you run it short? You can. Um, I like to run these with um, strangles to protect the uh, possibility of it bouncing here. This, to me, says I would be better to trade a strangle and trade the winner, cut the loser, and move with a quick, you know, at the money strike or something like that, and, and be okay with that. It minimizes risk, it minimizes the uh, potential for loss, but it gives you a pretty good return with a strangle strategy rather than, you know, just running a wheel or anything, swing trading this at that point. Just my opinion. It's the way I trade these things. Um, if you get lucky and it gives you a nice pullback to around 1150 and you want to own this company, you might consider selling some puts around there. But just remember, there is lots of other range that this can go to. And if you want to basically treat this like a set of fans, like I normally would, let's draw the regression line for that and find a target because that can happen if things go south for Ford continuously. You also have to remember, this is not just an American company. It's a global company. They sell vehicles everywhere. So if things get bearish for it and it breaks that mean reversion, that is your bear target right around 11 bucks. I'd rather own it at 11 than 12.50, just my my way of thinking. And if I was to say it breaches that zone, selling those puts would be lucrative for me, just the way I trade it. Anyway, um, it hasn't stalled, so to speak. I think it'll accumulate here, and I think Kramer's just not quite doing any. <laughs> I don't think he does any technical analysis, if I'm being honest. Um, he just doesn't know what to think of this, and I kind of don't either, but I can trade the break, and I know where the zone is that I'm expecting it to either break or hold. So, decision time will happen today or tomorrow, likely in this particular accumulation, and it'll give you a quick range trade, that's for sure. I'd say keep an eye on it. Um, last one he talked about, Unity Software. And I think in his words, I don't want this until it starts making money. Well, the thing is, it's a software company, man. It sells service. <laughs> Essentially, you can look at the cumulative range of this thing. You can see market structure's done its thing. You know, we had the hype waves, a pullback, major hype wave, came back into basic accumulation structure, trading in a range. We know how this works. We've been here before. Find about the middle of that range and know that there's a pivot there, about $30 and some change. You can see there's a pretty nice bearish measured move here. There's a primary mean reversion, done. We could see this thing start to give us some support in this area. And heck, you can see the liquidity right there. We're right in the zone where there's some demand. If demand holds and price starts to swing out, we get a cup and handle out of this pretty easy. There's your round. And watch for a swing back to the previous highs. In this range, look a little further left. Down, revisit pretty much all this stuff. Many pivots on this one, so this would be a, a good one to look for. Practicing marking your pivots out and learning how to trade from one to the other is pretty, pretty primal. After this reversion, and if it holds support here, look to trade from here to here. $4 move, $4.50 move. You can make significant profits on a $30 stock at that range. Hi, Jeremy. Hey, Ryan. How you doing, man? I'm fine, thank you. Is this a recorded uh, session or...? Yeah, yeah, I'm putting this on, on uh, YouTube and just basically building a watch list from uh, Kramer's stuff. I just looked at his lightning round and picked off the six stocks he talked about and run some technical analysis on them. Yeah, because I would like to watch it in tonight, so I missed it, I guess. So oh, I'm sorry. I kind asking. of ended up doing today's spontaneous. Um, I didn't know that uh, Matthew Tuttle was going to be traveling today, so I was like, um, hey, you want to get together at 11.15 today? He's like, oh, I'm traveling. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll wing it. Sometimes we got to. Yeah, because I, 
I like your analysis and it, it, it helps also to analyze by myself when I try to follow what you're doing. So I appreciate it, Jim. Oh, no problem. I enjoy being able to help as many people as I can with this. Uh, I got a comment on YouTube. What is it? Um, what do you mean it? <laughs> There's a lot of it. That's a broad, broad term. Uh, let me see here. I'm going to look back at a couple things I wanted to talk about with uh, Kramer's stuff. As a matter of fact, there were a couple stocks he said to stay away from that actually traded pretty nice. Yeah, I'll start with this one. When we looked at it, where'd it go? There it is. Long list. He was saying stay away from Ferrari. And um, Matthew and I looked at this and said, hey, man, pretty easy to see the zones on this thing. And that was when he said it back in here. Uh, no, back in here. It's like, stay away from this. Hammered right into the mean reversion and bounced like a freaking rocket. Well, rocket ball. Sure. Made a full-on one-for-one one up. You can see the primary and the secondary here. A uh, bit gappy, a bit hard to trade. But I was saying at that point, this is not a chart I would normally trade because there's just a lot of gaps in the liquidity and it's really hard to read this chart. But it's not impossible. And I said I would take interest in it right around this area. And lo and behold, what a move, man. Kramer said stay away. Hell no. Shame on you. <laughs> that is one heck of a ride. And I'll tell you a dirty little secret when it comes to looking at charts with a lot of choppiness in them or you get gappy stuff in there like this. Switch your candles. Go look at HA candles. Aha, you can find the trend. Look at that. So this is really a typical stock that I would point that out on. I look at these and I see this bearish trend, found support, liquidity, a nice little demand zone here. And boy, did it pop out of there. As soon as this green daily candle came out and broke above that eight period, it was game on, baby. And that thing just straight up gapped up twice. Ah, nice moves. I did take a few shares of this on. I didn't grab any options because the options liquidity kind of sucks. But I'm looking uh, pretty nice today. And I might consider holding on just a little bit longer if it can hold above 410. I think we got a good shot at going a little higher, like 415 or so. And that I can just base on drawing my boxes range to range. Split the mean here. Grab the box. Move it up. Can hit 420. Okay. 415 I'd say is a little more reasonable. Really that simple. I like Ferrari. And I know a lot of other people like Ferrari. <laughs> Great company. But yeah, that little trick, don't forget this one. You see a choppy chart. Throw those HA candles at that baby and watch the magic happen, especially if you can map your zones. And, man, it really makes a difference in your trading. So glad I took a good look at this thing and, and went long on it. Um, I think I'll start to mention these a little bit more in a group and start uh, putting together these watch lists weekly, even with the, uh, the stuff that we've been doing with the uh, throwing shade at Kramer type of thing. Um... I might be a little bit more inclined to start writing more about this and putting out um, just little watch list with tickers and my outlook on it, price targets, that sort of thing, and just throw it in the mix. This was a good one. Another one that was really good, and I'm trying to remember the damn ticker. It's been a while. I think it was Marathon Digital. Same, same. Liquidity were found. Blam. Blast off, baby. Only this one. We don't need HA candles for this one. We can clearly see here, in spite of that choppiness, we were looking at a little bit of a rounding and back to mean reversion. This is the right wall of the cup that I always talk about. There's your trend behind it. It went to one rim line, one daily candle, pulled back, found support, ran to the second rim line up in here, and did exactly what we expect of a cup and handle. There's your handle, baby. So this may be considered for another long position. Certainly map out your liquidity 
as such. Here is your supply zone for the short term on the daily. And we're looking to at least return to that. Probably see it outside target 2570 to 2640. And if we break that range, we can certainly break out of the handle portion and start to look at our measured move for the long run. Going with the bulls. Pretty easy to see your target outside of a cup and handle. It's usually just a little bit above the previous high. Sometimes you can take the range bar and stack it and find that target anyway. There it is, 34 bucks. Riot looks the same chart, uh, Jeremy. If you go to Riot, it is the same look of the chart. Nice. Let me go to grab that real quick. Yeah, pretty much dead on. That's a ringer. And again, you know, when you start seeing these charts and they get hard to read like this, don't be afraid. Switch candles. You'll see the trend so much easier. There's your handle. There's your cup rim line. Bam. Everything done and done. Good eye, man. And again, I marked this one out with trend, with uh, pivots, but same, same. Break out here. Target's up here. Just simple. Sometimes keeping trading uh, chart analysis simple is the best approach. Technical analysis sounds like a lot of technical analysis, but it can be really simple. Gosh, I remember putting these pivot lines in here a long time ago, guys. <laughs> it's one of my kind of what kind of one of my favorite charts to trade, really. Although you know, you look at regular candles, and it's just it's hard to read. But like I said, you just switch to those HA candles, man, and it makes the difference sometimes when it comes to chop. So, well, it makes a difference most of the time when it comes to chop. Don't be afraid to use them. Uh, I'll go over a couple more. Let me see here. Was it CRISPR? Yeah, there it is. Another easy one. Held support. This is not a cup and handle. This is a full-on measured move. And I knew exactly where the liquidity was. All we had to do was look left. And once it broke that, it finished an absolute textbook one for one. In fact, if I split the mean here and, and draw these boxes a little differently, I bet I had the target to begin with anyway. I just misdrew it a little bit. How about that? So, real easy chart to trade. Now it's a bit top heavy. I'd love to see it pull back here and, and do a mean reversion back to like 77 bucks, but uh, I could be wrong. Uh, that might just give you a little bit more of a one and a half, and I'll show you why I think that. We go and take another block and throw it on here. Half that block hits about 106 bucks. Look further left. Back to previous accumulation before it broke down. So definitely plot some targets on this thing. It can hit half or whole move. Pretty simple. So we got a target about what 105 and 120. If it breaks out of this. If not, we get a pullback, mean reversion, and then we'll continue back into the trend. But this is definitely a great stock for trading. All right, anybody got any tickers you want me to look at real quick that may or may not be on that list? GE, Jeremy. Ah, GE. It's been a while since I've traded GE. Been a long time. That is one heck of a nice move on the weekly here. Split the mean. This is one of the uh, classic investor stocks here. GE is. Let's see what that looks like on the monthly. Aha, mean reversion. Half the trend has been given back. It can go higher. In fact, it's starting to look like it wants to. But it has hit exactly that mean reversion on the monthly chart there. So be a little cautious of a pullback here. 
but if things stay bullish, we could see a one and a half or a two out of this one too. Yeah, I'm going to throw a pivot on the half mark and look left and see if that kind of lines up. Yeah, it gives us a previous support range right here, see? So if it goes for a half a move higher and it's starting to break out like it wants to, watch this liquidity zone. You can see the wick. In fact, let's mark that. I always turn these orange so they stand out. Breach that liquidity zone, likely to make a half a move higher, maybe even a whole move higher. And I'm betting the top of that box lines up with this zone up here. So pretty simple stuff. Um, if you want to look at this like it's a cup and handle, it's not. Cup and handle has to have a trend behind it. So it would have had to have you know, come a little bit further back here. I mean, down in like a dollar or whatever. And it certainly pulled back to nearly its all-time low here, or you know, most recent all-time low. So that does not make a cup and handle. A cup and handle is a continuation pattern after a high. It's not a reversal. So this was more like the inverse head and shoulders, if you want to call it that, or just a big accumulation zone after market structure. Pretty simple. Uh, broke out of the high, gave us a one-for-one one out, back to mean reversion. Has some moves left in it. Be a little cautious here if you are already long. Uh, start looking for maybe taking a little risk off, but if it gets through that zone, man, it'll do it quick because it's been there already, done it quick. So, oops. Are you available for one more, uh, Jeremy? Sure. S E D G. S E D G. No, S E D G. D like David and G like George. Gotcha. Yes. Solar Edge. Ooh, nice market structure. Let's look further. This is kind of a classic setup here. So we've had a steep downtrend. We're looking like a possible double bottom reversal here. You can see the second low was just a little bit lower. Um, if it holds the mean reversion of that range, and starts to go bullish, you can confirm a double bottom reversal above 96. And then start looking for your targets in the previous trend. But sometimes this can be bearish and end up being a bear flag and break lower. So take this one with a little caution because it has been lower before, obviously. If that breaks a bear flag here, you kind of... Uh, kind of um, in a position where you don't want to be. But if it holds that support area, certainly take note of the gap on the daily chart. you got a couple pivots to look at. And a return to this pivot is the mean of this accumulation. So if it bounces off here and starts to trend up towards uh, 85, you've got a pretty good chance of it going back to the previous high at least. And if it breaks a previous high, you've got a pivot here to go to. Then we can start looking at this structure. But for now, treat this as a be cautious that this can be a bear flag and it can break lower from here. It did miss earning two days ago, Jeremy. That's what this mess was. Yeah, they... Uh, might not have made as much as they should have, but structure-wise, it's, it's in an interesting area. Let's do this. So we can see there is a zone here. You can see accumulation. You can see it's tested most of it before. Yeah, you might not even have to go back that far, but look at this as a short-term liquidity zone. If it breaks that mean, gets above that previous high, you can see a trend out here and maybe give this bar back. But just be, be careful that this doesn't reject here and break lower. So like your first concern would be 
you know, looking for a possible bearish one for one. But if it breaks this mean, you end up getting back to the previous high. And if it breaks that high, you could also see this. So it's at a point where it could go either way. And then throw that on the daily and it finds its range. Oops. If you look at this previous low, that box is right in there for a measured move down. So yeah, I mean, if you're long on this right now, I'd be careful. But um, this might get interesting for a couple trades very soon. Either we'll get a bearish break and go down here to 61, uh, or we could go through this liquidity zone and start to melt to the upside and return half of this box back to the mean and possibly into the top and then a breakout. It'll give you a good trade. I'd definitely keep a good eye on it. All right. Thank you, Jeremy. Any side, man. So, do you guys still run your Discord? Yes, we do. In fact, we've um, been growing a bit, so um, our Discord is uh, gaining numbers, and we're still keeping the prices pretty low for membership. If you want to check us out, thank you. No problem. And hopefully, uh, hopefully, you heard me there on YouTube. I suck at typing fast, so I didn't respond in text, but you get the idea. Anyway, um, I did want to look at, um, there was one more, and I've got time. I've got a few more minutes here. Because I always kind of look back on some of the stuff we've called out on, on Kramer. And I know he was bearish on Tesla. Everybody knows that. We, we saw what Tesla did. You know, back to half. Came up to the top of our liquidity zone. And now we're trading around. But the other one he was saying to sell. Rockwell? No. That chart wasn't all that interesting to us. Dang, it might have been on one of the long uh, lists from long ago. But he flipped on it. So, like, we, um, he was saying sell it. It might have been probably more than a month ago or six weeks ago or so. But he was saying sell it, and it, it came bouncing on back and ripped really hard. It was a bottom tick for sure. And I can't remember what it was, but I'll, I'll pull it up a little later. But, um, we see that all the time. Whenever we see Kramer talking about something, it just brings volume and attention to the stock. And then we, we find trade ideas by just looking at basic price action analyst, or analysis. And it's like we, we almost certainly find stuff that you might have missed. But every once in a while, we'll find one that is just absolutely backwards. Like he says, sell the hell out of it. Oh, my God, stay away. And then it all of a sudden just rips back to you know all-time highs and stuff. And that's what we look to do here. We look to try to find some uh, some diamonds in the rough, so to speak. We try to find stuff that he's just totally wrong on. And we definitely um, get through on some of that stuff. But if you guys keep keep tuned in on Thursdays, we're going to keep doing this regardless of what we call this. We're going to start analyzing stuff, and uh, we'll, we'll bring everything out, and we'll show it to you. And, of course, if you have uh, any questions, you can certainly shoot them in the comments after the video closes. There will still be comments available. Uh, I can see the chat right now. Um, let's see here. Just finished school and finally have time to learn stocks. Heck, yeah, man. Come on aboard. You'll love it here. And uh, we do have a few Canadians in the mix. Um, we do a lot of futures trading with some of the uh, Canadians that we have. We also have some members across the pond. Um, as everybody knows, Victoria, she's awesome. We love having her on, and uh, you, sir. <laughs> we we like to to teach people how to do their own analysis, and we'll we'll give you some fish every now and then. You know, we'll give you some trade ideas and stuff. But it's like we're not financial advisors. We're not here to tell you what to buy and what to sell. We're here to show you how to do it yourself, uh, above anything. So if you want to uh, to learn how to trade to some success with yourself. 
we love to be able to be that platform to help you with that. We'd love to show you guys how how to find the best uh, way to an, uh, analyze stocks in in many ways than even above and beyond uh, just technical analysis. We also teach some fundamental stuff. And then we get into some serious details on some crazy option stuff that like simplifies it and opens up a whole wild um, tangible uh, variety of option trade strategies that will just blow your mind. So, I mean, we've, we've done everything here. We are run by traders who trade for a living. So we know what we're doing anyway. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll we'll catch you again next week. Um, I should have Matthew Tuttle back so we can have some uh, witty banter back and forth, maybe throw a few more uh, logs on the fire to burn Jim Cramer. <laughs> but uh, in the meantime, uh, we'll catch you next week. Thanks again, guys.